You may be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tiffany Randall, and I'm the Dean of the Math, Science, Health, and Human Services Division here at Bright Point Community College. And I want to welcome everyone to our Fall 22 Nurse Pinning Ceremony. Congratulations to you all. I want to start off by um, sharing a few words from Dr. Bridget Wilson, our uh, nursing director, who was unable to join us this evening. She just wanted me to convey her well wishes and wish you all the best on the next leg of your journey. So thank you. I have to confess, everyone, that um, I'm so excited to be standing before you all today. And part of it is um, a little selfish, in part because there were a few of you that I had the pleasure of teaching in microbiology over the last couple of years. And so I'm looking forward to kind of connecting faces with names because I was used to seeing you all in a little box, right, during the pandemic. And I'm excited for us as a community and certainly regionally as you all uh, rise to the occasion and, and fill some of the critical needs and, and shortages that we have in healthcare. Um, and finally, I'm excited because as the daughter of a wound care and med surge nurse, I know how much this next step means to you and how much it means to your family. So again, congratulations. As we turn to our program, I want to introduce to you all who we have on the stage, who's seated behind me. And before I do that, I certainly want to recognize any faculty that are in our audience, any other of our deans, uh, our VPs, members of uh, the executive leadership team here at the college, um, and any members of the foundation board um, and, and the larger community. So thank you all for joining us as well. We have with us tonight our president, Dr. Ted Raspeller, if you could raise your, your hand there. <laughs> our special guest, our invited speaker, Ms. Jean Tyler Stallone, thank you. Ms. Diane Siner, Ms. Becky McQueen, <laughs> Ms. Sutton Compton, Ms. Janet Arnold, Mr. Reese Willoughby, Ms. Carol Taylor, and last but certainly not least, our Vice President of Learning and Student Success, Dr. Bill Figge. I am going to turn it over to our President, Dr. Raspiller, to introduce our speaker. Well, thank you, and let me add my welcome to Bright Point uh, to, for today's ceremony. You know, nurse pinning, I got to tell you, is my second favorite day at work. My favorite day is graduation. But regardless, it's our chance to say thank you to all of you, first of all, for choosing Bright Point in the first place, and second, for staying with us through your journey. I think, I think maybe an appropriate thing to say on this one is not easy, but worth it, right? Now that we're looking back, not easy, but worth it. This is, there, there is a no more rigorous two-year program that we have at Bright Point or that any other community college has than the associate degree nursing program. And that's for all the right reasons. As we've learned and many of our families have learned over the last three years, if not many, many years before, um, how critical the role of a nurse is in what we know as our society. And so I wanna say thank you, not just for selecting Bright Point, but for selecting this profession, whatever your path may be. And I think maybe, maybe this quote might be um, important for you to hear and think about. Save a life, you're a hero. Save a hundred lives, you're a nurse. <laughs> it's my pleasure today to introduce Jean Tyler Scalone, our speaker. She's been the Bon Secours Mercy Health Manager of Nurse Practice and Clinical Education in Richmond, 
uh, but she's chosen to live here in Chester, Virginia, where she's lived her whole life. She received her bachelor's degree in nursing from Radford University and her master of science in nursing from the University of Phoenix. She's board certified in nursing professional development. And I was just kind of chatting her up a little bit. She kind of likes the teaching piece. So maybe there might be some other opportunities for her to express that part of herself. Uh, during her 25 year career in nursing, her specialties include critical care, emergency care, and nursing professional development. Join me in bringing Jean Tyler Scalone to the podium. Welcome. To me, it's not only about your celebration today of finishing nursing, but it is the start of your nursing journey. It is an honor to be here and recognize each and every one of you in your achievements. And I can't wait to hear all about it today. When I look at your faces though, what I really sit here and think of is wow. Not only did you choose nursing, you chose nursing at the start of a pandemic and a national global nursing shortage. To me, that is amazing because that represents so much about your characteristics of courage when so many other people ran the other direction from healthcare, you stepped up and stepped forward and said, this is what I wanna do. Which also tells me that you have the compassion and the calling. So when I look at you, I see the future and I know that on behalf of your professional colleagues, your instructors, the faculty here, we all wanna do everything we can to set you up for success in your career, because I also know you're gonna take care of me one day. <laughs> when I look at, out and I see all the family, the love and support that is here with you today, your friends, these are the same people that have been there through every step of the journey with you who have sacrificed and been there to support you. I must say and take a moment to give them a round of applause for being there for you. And for you guys, you made it, you did it. So here's the good news for all of you that have sacrificed and supported each one of these graduates. We are a great return on investment. <laughs> now for the graduates, I know many of you have probably already got your job set up and are ready to start your next paths. Some of you may have even been blessed enough to find the rare job in healthcare that does not have on-call hours, holidays, and weekends. And you're thinking, ha, 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 I did it. Wrong. You are officially on call 24-7 for everybody in this room that is here supporting you. <laughs> They're going to call you with a, it hurts when I do that. Hey, I got this lab work back. What does that mean? Hey, I need to go see the specialist on this. Who should I go see? Then it even gets worse. Can you go with me? Can you take off and use your pay time off to go with me to the appointment? And then you get out in the parking lot after you leave the appointment and you said, so what did you hear? And they say, well, I don't know, that's why you were here. Because all they heard was wah, 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 wah. And you are officially the medical interpreter. So in all seriousness, when I first learned about coming here today, I sat back and thought, 25 years ago, and trust me, it'll go fast. If when I was in your seats, what did I want to hear? And I thought, you know, I'd like to hear a nurse's perspective of what does it mean to be a nurse? So with that, let's start with some of the captain obviouses. We have been an ethical profession, one of the top 10 ethical professions for as long as I can recall. So I always think about that saying of, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Because we've got to hold that standard. The other one, compassion. Patients don't care how much we know until they know how much we care, right? That sounds easy. Sometimes it's not. Because sometimes when you're working with people in the most difficult parts of their lives, they don't act as they normally would on a normal day. So when you have challenging days, I will also tell you Think of the most important person in your life. And as soon as I said that, somebody popped into your head. Treat every patient like that person. If you do, you won't ever go wrong. 
Now, when you come out and you start your job, I can tell you what you're thinking it means to be a nurse is skills, 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 skills. I want to be able to get that IV. I want to be able to drop that NG. I want to get that Foley catheter on the first try. And you get so focused on skills. And I find that you have such a desire to prove yourself to your colleagues. And you look over at that nurse who has been doing it for 20 years, and you say, I'm going to do it just like they did. Guess what? They didn't get there overnight. It took them 20 years to get that skill set. So take time to be nice to yourselves and don't try to set that impossible bar. The skills will come. Instead, I challenge you, don't get so focused on tasks and skills, but learn how to look at the big picture of the patient, the mind, the body, the spirit, and not to just be like, they're here with acute renal failure, got it. Because as we all know, Every system, every organ is a domino effect with the whole body. And if you don't have the mind set with the patient or the spirit set with the patient, you also are not going to have the same outcome. You've got to look at the big picture. And then that comes with practice. So as you go to give, for example, your medicines, the one thing I will tell you will make me cringe to this day is if I hear a patient say, so what is this for? And the nurse says, I don't know. Should never come out of our mouths. The good news is, yes, there is good news. We have a lot of technology out there to support you. So use it for what it's worth. We have micromedics right there on the Mars when you go to give your medicines and stuff, where if you don't know what that med is, it's a click of the button away. Many of us can actually recall when you had to go get out the little Mosby's drug book and you had to look it up and et cetera. You got it at the click of a button. So follow your processes, follow your policies, follow the tools that are there to support you. I do remember when I started nursing, and don't judge, yes, it was on paper. There was no barcode scanning of drugs. These tools are out there to help you. So that is good news that you have a lot of support as you move forward. Now, with this also means whether or not you realize it or are ready to embrace it, you are committed to lifelong learning. I know, like, all of the guys start to glaze over on me right away of, no! <laughs> but it is an ever-changing field that we have chose to be in, and the advances we make every day are amazing. So I challenge you when you get to think about, you want me to pick up a journal and read an article online? I don't even want to crack a book. I promise you will find the joy in reading again. It will come back. Over time, it takes a little bit, get through your NCLEX, and over time it comes back. But when you do get frustrated and you're like, really, you want me to read? I want you to think about this. When you choose a physician if you needed a knee replacement, you want to go to a doctor who's performing a knee replacement the same way they did 20 years ago? Or do you want to go to the doctor who's learned the best practices, the most invasive, uh, most non-invasive um, procedure, has the best um, equipment and such, low surgical site infections? Which doctor would do you want? Well, guess what? Our patients want those same type of nurses, and that's what we need to be. Now, the other thing I will tell you sounds simple again. What does it mean to be a nurse? It means you're a good listener. That sounds simple, right? But it's not. In the field of nursing, it's a very demanding job, no matter where you're at, whether it's a physician office, an outpatient clinic, an inpatient unit, an ER, wherever you are, it's demanding. And when I say be a good listener, I actually don't want you to multitask and do 12 things at once, which is what we do. We're like human octopus. We just move. But to actually stop, look at your patient, and say, so what is important to you about your care today? What are you afraid of? And taking five minutes to stop, look them in the eye, and ask that question, you're going to be amazed at what you learn. And you will find that it's going to make a better nurse for you and better outcomes for your patients. There's another part of listening, and that's to the little voice inside your head. Not the one that gets your behavioral health consult, not that voice. But it is truly this little voice 
and you will find that it's going to guide you on your nursing journey. Every nurse that I've ever talked to during their career that made a mistake said their little voice was screaming at them. And they may have even done a few steps to check out their answers, but eventually they told the little voice to be quiet, and they did it anyway. Don't stop seeking the answer and validating and verifying until that little voice is satisfied when it talks to you, okay? That won't steer you wrong, I promise. Now, as I'm talking about this, some of you are out there thinking, yeah, 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 J. Tyler, I got that. That's the basics. It's like when I get in my car and I put my foot on the brake and I buckle my seat, but before I start it, I got that. Give me something else. Okay, okay, I hear you. So, like the Lion King, Rafiki, let's look closer. Let's look harder. What does it mean to be a nurse? You could say it's a job. Say it's job security, it's a paycheck. You might say it's a career. Some of you might say it's a calling. I will tell you it's more than that. It's a gift. And your first thought when I say that might be, oh, she's saying that because it's the holidays. Nope. You might think I'm saying that because, yeah, 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 it's a gift I give to everybody. It is, but that's not the part of it that I'm talking about. It's going to be a gift that gives to you. Ralph Waldo Emerson has a quote. Kind of like yours too, by the way. <laughs> His quote is, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. One life. You might know the quote, the author is unknown. When you're a nurse, you know that every day you will touch a life or a life will touch yours. Every day. When you go into your job every day, you are gonna have every patient breathe a little easier because you're there. Their families and loved ones are gonna breathe a little easier because you're there every day. Start to do that math. If you did five patients a day and had three family members with you, just start doing the math and you're a nurse for, I'm hoping 30 plus years, we need you. <laughs> Look at how many lives are gonna breathe easier because of you. But Ralph Waldo Emerson said, just one. How many careers can say that? How many professions can say, I bring comfort, I bring healing, and I bring hope to my patients every day? We impact people in their most difficult times and sometimes their happiest times. It could be when you're bringing new life into the world. It could be getting a diagnosis of a critical disease. The vulnerability they show us when you're, if you're in a procedure field where they come in, meet you for less than 10 minutes, and then entrust you as they go unconscious and you're there caring for them. We go through treatments, rehabilitations with them. We go into their homes, recovery, and yes, we are there even in death. How many people can say that that's what they do? That's the impact they make. Your presence has a direct impact on every life you're going to interact with. It's up to you on how that impact looks and what your story in it looks like. During my nursing journey, I have found the lives I have touched have given back to me just as much. That is why nursing to me is a gift. Sounds like it can be a little overwhelming, and it can be. So I'm also gonna empower you with, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't say her name today, Florence Nightingale, her quote, I attribute my success to this. I never gave nor took any excuse. We can always find an excuse on why our job is hard in any profession, but especially yours. And I will tell you, don't use the nursing shortage as an excuse. Don't use it's a pandemic as an excuse. And don't let others give you excuses either. We've got to hold one another to that same standard. And there are going to be days that you walk out of work and say, I wanted to be a nurse. I need a different career path. It's normal. It's going to happen in any career path you choose. 
But when you have those days and you've had that difficult patient or family that have tested every inch of your patients, or you've had that tough case that's broken your heart, I promise you later when you look back on that case, those are gonna be the ones you remember the most and that you've had the biggest impact on. On those days, those are also the times, and I need the help of each and every one of you in here to support them on this, you gotta take care of yourselves. As nurses, we're caregivers, we're nurturers, we have been since the moment we, we came into this world, and I need you to remember you got to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. You know when you get on a plane, what does the flight attendant say? If the cabin loses pressure and the mask fall down, who puts on, the, what do you do with the mask first? You apply yours first before you help others. So take time to take care of yourself. It is not only going to make you a better nurse and better outcomes for your patients, but it's essential for your success. So as I've been up here and I've been able to look at each and every one of your faces, I can't wait to learn of your story and I hope I get to see you. And if you ever see me around, stop me and say, hey, because I want to hear your story. It's going to grow and change and no stories are like. The person in front of you, beside you, to the left and right of you, nobody's nursing story is the same. And like when I came out, I thought I knew exactly what my career path would look like. It looked nothing like that but I loved every step of the way. So I look forward to seeing and hearing your stories. Donna Wilk Cardillo is an inspirational nurse leader and she wrote uh, a quote that I wanted to share. When I think about all the patients and their loved ones that I have worked with over the years, I know most of them don't remember me nor I them, but I do know that I gave a little piece of myself to each of them and they to me and those threads make up the beautiful tapestry in my mind that is my career in nursing. So thank you. Thank you for choosing nursing, and I hope it is a gift that gives to you for many, many years to come. And congratulations. So glad to have you as my colleagues. like to present um, Jean Kyler with this little gift. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure to be able to present to you um, our nursing graduates of December 2022. Um, if you want to stand up and come, come up to the edge in alphabetical order, please. Samantha Bailey. <laughs> Samantha enjoyed completing clinicals at many different facilities in our area, and she has accepted an emergency department position at Short Pump Emergency Center. <laughs> Jennifer Ball. Jennifer enjoyed meeting many professors who offered their time, support, and encouragement with a sincere desire to see her succeed. She was also afforded the privilege of seeing her family's willingness, especially that of her children, to sacrifice alongside her day after day. She is forever grateful. When Jennifer grows up, she wants to be a nurse, but is still figuring out exactly where she will land. Francis Barron. <laughs> Frankie enjoyed getting to observe robotic assisted surgery, and she has accepted a position at Johnson Willis Hospital as an operating room nurse. <laughs> Logan Kennard. 
Logan is grateful for the close friendships made and thankful for the constant support and encouragement from her family. She has accepted a position at Henrico Doctors Hospital in the mother baby unit. <laughs> Courtney Coe. <laughs> Courtney enjoyed meeting incredible people who are going to be lifelong friends and she has accepted a position in the VCU Medical Intermediate and Intensive Care Units. <laughs> Joshua James Contner. <laughs> Joshua says, nursing school taught me I can handle more stress than I thought. <laughs> he has accepted a position at Chippenham Hospital Trauma Step-Down Unit. Evan Crouch. Evan is thankful for the lifelong friends he made, accepted a position at St. Mary's Hospital, and will take the NCLEX in February. Madison Dawson. Madison is thankful for the new friendships she made in nursing school. Madison plans to continue furthering her education in nursing. Kristen DeLacy. Kristen enjoyed how supportive and helpful most of the instructors were. Kristen plans to be a labor and delivery nurse at St. Francis Medical Center. Millie Delgado. <laughs> Millie is also thankful for the friendships gained in nursing school. Millie plans to study for the NCLEX test while searching for the perfect job. <laughs> Jadelyn Duenas. Jadelyn is most appreciative of the opportunity to precept in the hospital and has accepted a position at the Bon Secours Chester Emergency Department. <laughs> Mariah Gagnon. <laughs> Mariah enjoyed making new friends and gaining confidence in herself she plans to start in labor and delivery unit at Henrico Doctors Hospital. <laughs> Michaela Garris. <laughs> Michaela enjoyed making long lasting friendships and has accepted a position in the women's health oncology unit at Johnson Willis Hospital. <laughs> Haley Hawkins. Haley is thankful for the opportunity to watch herself and her classmates grow into completely different people. She will be working at the cardiovascular ICU at Southside Medical Center of Bon Secours. <laughs> Shelby Hicks. <laughs> Shelby enjoyed making new friends. Shelby plans to further her education in nursing. Kyle Huddleston. <laughs> Kyle enjoyed the clinical experiences gained through the fourth semester preceptorships. Kyle has accepted a position in the VCU Medical Respiratory ICU and will begin work on the BSN program. <laughs> Ashley Humphreys Knight. Ashley is thankful for meeting so many amazing people and soon-to-be nurses and plans to pursue an emergency room position while studying for the NCLEX exam. <laughs> Cole Jackson. <laughs> Cole enjoyed getting to meet a diverse group of people with similar interests. Cole has accepted a position at VCU and is working on their BSN. <laughs> Shannon, Hall. 
Shanna Keaton. <laughs> Shanna's most positive experience was realizing one day in clinical that she wasn't terrified to touch patients anymore. <laughs> She has accepted a position at the MIU Mother Infant Unit at St. Francis Medical Center. <laughs> Ashley Lovelady. <laughs> Ashley's thankful for the friendships which became her support system through nursing school. She's accepted a position in the emergency department at St. Francis Medical Center and is eager to begin her career as a nurse. Katie McHugh. <laughs> Katie enjoyed precepting on her own unit with her coworkers and has accepted a position on the short stay unit at Chippenham Medical Center. <laughs> Sarah McGuffin. <laughs> Sarah's grateful that she met some of her best friends. She has accepted a position at the Georgia Cancer Specialists Infusion Center in Atlanta. <laughs> Emmanuel James Mendoza. <laughs> Emmanuel is thankful for the friendships made and the knowledge gained in nursing school. He's accepted a position in the Interventional Cardiac Unit at Henrico Doctors Hospital after passing the NCLEX. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Michael. <laughs> Caitlin says, I would not be here without the support of my study group and my family. Thank you. She has accepted a position at Thrive Skilled Pediatric Care and will be moving to Arizona to further her nursing education. <laughs> Haley Moss. <laughs> Haley enjoyed discovering her passion for emergency medicine and making lifelong friends. She's accepted a position in the emergency department at St. Francis Medical Center. <laughs> Brooke Mountcastle. <laughs> Brooke gained a group of classmates that quickly became one of her biggest support systems throughout the program. She's accepted a position at St. Francis Medical Center. Her long-term goal is to work with in-home hospice and become a certified death doula. <laughs> Cherish Nash Turnbow. <laughs> Cherish's po most positive moments include time spent with classmates. She is now taking her talents to the VCU Ortho Trauma Department. <laughs> Samantha Perry. <laughs> Samantha has accepted a position at the Bon Secor Chester Emergency Room. <laughs> Julie Philp. Julie enjoyed the friendships made with other nursing students and the variety of clinical experiences. She's accepted a position at the Children's Hospital of Richmond VCU Acute Care Pediatric Unit. <laughs> Ashley Riley. <laughs> Ashley is thankful for the friendship she made. She has accepted a position in the coronary ICU at VCU. Ashley Rosario. Yeah. Ashley says, I enjoyed making forever friendships. The support, love, and encouragement made the experience more tolerable. <laughs> she plans to take her NCLEX in February, begin the BSM program at JMU in January, and she has accepted an offer in the acute care pediatrics department at VCU. Her long-term goal is to become a pediatric nurse practitioner. Nikki Sawyers. 
Nikki appreciates the relationships with friends and faculty she made and wants to thank her family for their unwavering support these past two years. She's accepted a position at Henrico Doctors Hospital in the mother baby unit and plans to complete her BSN next year. Matthew Vincent Searles. Matthew has learned that he can get through anything. He plans to take the, the NCLEX and get his BSN. Gianna Silvestri. <laughs> Gianna is also thankful for the friendships made with fellow students. Gianna has accepted a position in the neonatal intensive care unit at Henrico Doctors Hospital. Austin Smith. Austin enjoyed making new friends who share a passion for nursing. He's accepted a position in the labor and delivery unit at Henrico Doctors Hospital Forest. Lisa Smith. Lisa is grateful for learning to help people when they need it the most. She's accepted a position on the Women's Health Unit at St. Mary's Hospital. <laughs> Jessica Vera. <laughs> Jessica enjoyed making new friends. Jessica will be working at the emergency room at Chippenham Medical Center. <laughs> Ashley Worthen. Ashley is thankful for the lifelong friendships gained and has accepted a position in the neonatal intensive care unit at Henrico Doctors Hospital. <laughs> Katie White. <laughs> Katie is appreciative of the understanding gain of how and why the body works so she can annoy her children. She's accepted a position at VCU in the Medical Respiratory ICU and plans to continue her education to become a certified registered nurse anesthetist. <laughs> Marilyn Zinkwich. <laughs> Marilyn is thankful for new friends met and for discovering her passion for emergency medicine. She will be working in the emergency department at VCU and starting her BSN in January. of leading us in the Nightingale Pledge. This was written in honor of Florence Nightingale, who is well known as the founder of nursing. If there are RNs in the room, please stand with me. And fellow graduates, please stand with me. And we will recite the Nightingale Pledge together. It's in your program if you need a peek. <laughs> Okay, I solemnly pledge myself in the presence of this assembly to faithfully practice my profession of nursing. I will do all in my power to make and maintain the highest standards and practices of my profession. I will hold in confidence all personal matters committed to my keeping in the practice of my calling. I will assist the physician in his or her work and will devote myself to the welfare of my patients, my family, and my community. 
I will endeavor to fulfill my rights and privileges as a good citizen and take my share of responsibility in promoting the health and welfare of the community. I will constantly endeavor to increase my knowledge and skills in nursing to make use of them wisely. I will zealously seek to nurse those who are ill wherever they may be and whenever they are in need. I will be active in assisting others in safeguarding and promoting the health and happiness of mankind. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm going to give the mic to Dr. Figgy. All right. Well, they said we were going to end at 5, so I got a 15 minute closing. I'm glad y'all knew I was joking with that. It won't be that long, I promise. First off, congratulations. That was absolutely sensational. Hearing, seeing you guys cross the stage, starting in a pandemic, finishing live in front of your family and friends. You know, having uh, kids myself, 14 and, and 16, when they do something well, it just makes my heart warm. And seeing your family members out in this audience, I know you have warm heart seeing your loved ones accomplish a goal. You know, some of you, since it was real little, some of you had other jobs and decided you wanted to be a nurse, and for whatever reason, you're here today at Bright Point Community College as the first nursing graduates of Bright Point Community College, in fact, right? You know, as our president will say, our name changed, but not our, our first name changed, but not our middle name. We're always about community. And your guys are going to go out and help our community. And it's so very important. And Gene, I loved your energy and your speech was so vibrant uh, and just motivational. And really appreciate your words today. Uh, and one group I'd like to stand, and I think we um, should recognize, I think they should stand, is our nursing faculty, because you wouldn't have been able to do it without them as well. So would our nursing faculty please stand and be recognized. So three memories in my life that come to mind where you know where you were at those moments involve nurses. Uh, two very uh, special moments in my life and one very sad moment in my life. Uh, when my oldest daughter was born uh, 16 years ago, December 11th, so just last weekend, it seems like it was just yesterday, uh, I stood literally right next to the nurse as she came into this world. And it was the most surreal moment of my life. And if you don't have kids yet, and I know many of you are the parents of these kids, uh, young adults, um, it's just you don't know love until that moment happens. You just really don't. And I was right next to a nurse as, as that occurred. And it was amazing. Uh, just 19 months later, don't judge, uh, <laughs> Second kid came into the world, and it was a little bit different. When she came in, there were about five or six nurses there, and right as she was born, they rushed her to the back of the room because there was no sound. And about 15 seconds later, all of a sudden, we hear a loud noise, and she started breathing. And I don't think she's been quiet since, to be honest with you. Uh, but little Erica came into the world, and so there was a nurse right there, and a lot of nurses. Uh, to make sure that she was well. And she went into the NICU, and nurses took care of her there. And then I'll never forget, uh, in uh, 2012, March, when my dad's nurse uh, came into him about an hour before he passed and kissed him on the forehead and just said, we'll see you on the other side. And she cared for him. And cancer, she knew it was, just, it was, it was going to be his final moments. And I held his hand uh, with the nurse's bias as well as he took his final breaths. And so, as Jean stated, you know, you're there in, in people's great moments, and you're there in sometimes some of their saddest moments. But you're there. And that's what I'll never forget, is those people who took care of my kids, those who took care of my dad in his final moments, and all the people that you're going to care for in your nursing career is going to be countless. And so with that, celebrate. Celebrate what you're about to do. One thing I've noticed is, y'all don't smile enough. Give us a little smile here, right? This is a celebration. 
And so with that, I hope you all have a very happy holiday. Celebrate your success. My freshman orientation teacher, when I was 18 years old, said always celebrate your success. And so whether you're going out to dinner tonight or tomorrow, whenever it is, celebrate what you have accomplished here. Enjoy the ride as a nurse and just go out and do great things. And when you're ready uh, and, and you feel that other calling that might come to you, we're always looking for nursing faculty. <laughs> so you can come back and put some of the torture they put on you. To, no, you, you can put on that. that, that uh, you'll be able to take what you're learning and give back to others. So don't forget there's also that opportunity to teach. So with that, happy holidays, congratulations. Everybody be safe, and we'll see you all soon. Great. Right.